Hello everybody, Big Fluffy Stuff here, and tonight we're going to bring to you a Esper Super Friends deck tech. Um, looking at it base value, it's going to kind of look at a regular Esper control list with a couple more planeswalkers in it. You're not wrong. The sideboard on the other hand is a transitional sideboard, which allows us to go into a more mid-range strategy against some decks to surprise them. So we're going to take a look at it here, we'll discuss the main, we'll look at the side, we'll discuss the side, and then I'll discuss some of the sideboarding options. Starting us off here, we have 2 Negate, 2 Search for Escanta, 3 Cast Down, 1 Moment of Craving, 2 Cry of the Carnium, 4 Absorb, 1 Dovin, Grand Arbiter, 1 Kaya, Orzhov Zerzaber, 3 Mortify, 1 Ixalan's Binding, 4 Chemistry's Insight, 2 Veraska's Contempt, 3 Kaya's Wrath, 1 Karn, Scion of Urza, for Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. And for our regular control package is normal, four of every duel, one swamp, and one island. Now you may look at this and just go, this is just an Esper list with more Planeswalkers. And technically you're correct, but this deck does play out a little differently due to some of the synergies that we have. Um, so first off here we're going to talk about Karn a little bit. Uh, Karn is just good in control shells. The plus one to continually get card advantage is fantastic. The minus one to get the cards back that your opponent doesn't give you is fantastic. The minus two to make an artifact token creature that gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. On the outside might not look that good. Pairs surprisingly well with Dovin Grand Arbiter. The minus one on Dovin to make a one one colorless author that flies and gains you a life means every turn you can go minus one for Dovon, make a flyer, M minus two from Karn, make a token. So now you have three power on board, and it can snowball very quickly. Uh, the Dovon on his own, depending on what kind of deck you're playing against, normally you can go minus one. Um, next turn, plus one to attack again. Normally what I like to try to do is go minus one, minus one, just to try to get as much power on board as you can and then start plussing because if you can get to that point and you're gaining three count as a turn you're going to get to that set minus seven very quickly and that minus seven can normally end the game there being able to custom craft your hand is fantastic the Kaya or Zobzer uh was one of the cards we looked at in spoiler season and we wanted it to be so so good we thought it was going to be good it was one of our sleeper picks turned out really didn't see a lot of play but seeing how the meta has changed some since we were discussing the card I feel that her plus one is now a lot better and falls in suit with what I thought it does hit some of the jumpstart cards being chemistry's insight and beacon bolt for the main ones maybe some radical ideas in the I think it's maximum velocity um, the other thing it's good for too is in the salt eye match being able to eat their targets for their find before they can cast it or forcing them to use a memorial to folly when they don't want to which is fine they will get the creature back but you can eat the other one gain some life um, the minus one really isn't that great you can flick tokens potentially here and there which is alright but I don't think it's the best play you have the minus five on the other hand um, can be used as an alternate win condition what I like to try to do is get Kaya up to six minus to burn them for you know five to six damage and then start your plussing again the life gain is really relevant not the plus one um, sometimes also eating your own creatures or planeswalkers is correct for cards like eldest reborn or once that hits board outside of the Ixalan's binding and maybe using your teferi to tuck it you have no real way to interact with those cards so being able to eat your yard makes that card actually bad for them now we're going to look at our sideboard we have two duress, one negate, one cast down, one moment of craving, three thief of sanity, one Ixalan's binding, four Basicilla Belhan, and two hostage takers. Now you might look at this sideboard and go, wow, this thing looks very awful. And actually on our stream, it ran for us very well. We'll give you some explanations here. Hostage Taker right now, very good against the standard Darling, that is Hydra Crisis, being able to eat it when it comes into play, 
and be able to recast theirs is fantastic. Even if you're not gaining a ton of advantage off their Hydra Crisis, it's a removal spell and an advantage spell for you. The Bell Haunt is very good in matchups like Mono Red and Mono White or Mono White or Tokens lists. As it comes down, making them discard a card normally on turn 4, they're already running out of hand. The gaining of 3 life helps you stabilize, and the 4 toughness is very hard for decks like Red and White or Boros Agro to run through. Ixlon's Binding is just more protection against things like Planeswalkers and other annoying enchantments because as we know in this format there's tons of enchantments that are annoying and there's tons of Planeswalkers that are annoying. Uh, Thief of Sanity is one of those cards that when it goes left uncheck it does just end up snowballing the game for you. Uh, I do like it in matchups like Mono Red where it makes a burn spell go to the Thief and not your face so you figure if it's 3 mana to save yourself 3 life it pretty much turns into an absorb. You're fine with having more absorbs. Uh, clearly, the moment of craving cast down deals with creature decks. Negate and dress. This is pretty much your package for control matchups. Normally, versus the control decks. Um, I don't love hand hate, but I do like to rest just because it's one mana. You really don't need it between all the counter spells that you have. Plus, with the super friends vibe and feel you have you're forcing the control decks in the mirrors to have to deal with your walkers. And normally when stuff like this hits board, the only thing they have is Teferi. And that's it. So the walkers are very good versus the control mirrors. Um, so now to discuss, first off, the change I would make to the main. We were obscenely flooding on our Monday stream. Uh, it's up over on the Twitch if you want to watch it. So my recommendation is I would cut one Hollowed Fountain for one of the three following cards. A Veraska's Contempt, a Precognitive Perception, or for the spicy tech, one Chromium. Chromium's good because it helps you win the game. Veraska's Contempt is good because it exiles something annoying and gains you through life. Precognitive Perception, this is the first blue deck in a while where I haven't had one in the 75. I do love that card very much. Now with that out of the way, we'll discuss some of the sideboard options you have here. Kind of touch on them. So against a deck like Burn, I do not like to search for a scant as it's kind of slow. Uh, turn 2, you have better plays. Um, and I usually cut the negates. Yes, it does stop Burn spells, but they're just not good enough. And I also like to cut one Teferi because it is very slow. Sometimes two Teferi, depending. And then normally I will cut one Chemister's Insight and I'll bring in my Bell Haunts and then the Moment and a Cast Down for sure. Um, you can bring in the, some Thief of Sanities just because, again, it does have to, if they don't get rid of this, you end up eating their deck normally the Thief of Sanity will win you the game on its own if they don't deal with it right away. Um, for Control Mirrors, I like to board out my one Moment of Craving, the two Cry of the Carniums, and usually I'll also board out uh, two to three Kaya's Wrath. Sometimes it's good to have them in there because most Control Mirrors they will bring in their Thief of Sanities as well. But in those matches, clearly your two dresses, they come in, the negate comes in. Uh, I will try to bring in the Thief of Sanities, and usually an Ixalan's Binding. Thief of Sanity versus the Control Mirror is great, eating their counter spells, eating their draw spells. Uh, you gain so much advantage from it. The Ixalan's Binding deals with Teferi and other annoying things you just don't want to see. Um, Okay, so that's our deck. Those are just some of the decks you'll see. Um, if you want more sideboard help, comment down below. We'll try to help you as soon as we can. We try to answer to everything. Um, if you haven't liked the video, please do. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you want to go over to the Twitch and follow, that's fantastic. And if you'd like to support us even further, feel free to head on over to our Patreon. It helps us out a lot. We're currently in the process of trying to get a better PC so we can bring more content for our videos and for our Twitch streams. So with that said, I would like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.